It's such a small market, Patrick. Total global production of silver is only $20 billion. So it's a very easy market to control. And they absolutely have had to control silver going back at least 30, 40 years because the dollar is in competition with gold. Gold is the anti-fiat, the anti-dollar. And you, could, you there's no way you could have silver wanting to... 200, 300, 500 thousand dollars an ounce and gold not move. So in order to be able to keep gold in a box and be able to point at it and say, see, gold bad, dollar good, they've had to, to just sit on silver with paper contracts that are completely unbacked. It's such a small market, Patrick. Total global production of silver is only $20 billion. So it's a very easy market to control. And they absolutely have had to control silver going back uh, at least 30, 40 years because the dollar is in competition with gold. Gold is the anti-fiat, the anti-dollar. And you could, you, there's no way you could have silver running to 200, 300, 500 thousand dollars an ounce and gold not move. According to Bill Holter, the strategy has been to keep gold in a box so they can point at it and say, see, gold bad, dollar good. He suggests that to achieve this, they've had to suppress silver using paper contracts that aren't backed by anything. Holter mentioned that they introduced EDAS in the early 2000s, and if you read the prospectus, it seems they don't actually need to buy any silver or gold. Apparently, they can just have contracts and still follow the prospectus, so there's no need for physical metal to control the price. He also pointed out that if you look at Shanghai, there's reportedly a 3-5% to premium on silver compared to the West, leading to an arbitrage situation where silver is being drained from London and New York inventories and ending up in Shanghai. He noted that Shanghai's silver inventory recently dropped to under 1,000 tons, which might be the lowest it's been since the market started. Holter's take is that they've had to keep silver down because if the public starts piling into silver, gold could blow up. And when that happens, the dollar system could be in serious trouble. That's a great point there, Bill. Appreciate that. Uh, so let's say someone, someone listens to this or, you know, they're, they're considering buying precious metals. I mean, if you're just starting, you want to have silver because you're going to barter with silver. When the system goes down, silver will give you on hand money. And gold is, uh, that's where you transfer your large wealth from this system to the next system. I would say if you've got 100,000 US dollars or less to invest, I would do all silver. And if you had a million dollars, I'd still do uh, 70, 30. I'd do 700,000 in silver and only 300,000 in gold. And as that ratio comes down to say 40 to 50, silver will have outperformed double over gold as far as purchasing power. And you can sell some silver, buy gold, and you'll end up with more gold ounces than if you just bought it outright today. It's a ratio trade is all it is. The dollar has been weaponized for years and years and they started ratcheting, ratcheting the the uh, the weaponization up during the previous administration. Um, and, and now you've got, they basically stole the $300 billion of Russian treasuries and they're, they're borrowing or using that as collateral to fund Ukraine. So it's been totally weaponized and there's been pushback. The pushback has been uh, the formation of the BRICS. And we're only two months away from the big BRICS meeting in Russia. And I think that very well could be, if you want to call it the, the reverse Bretton Woods moment, where the dollar loses, actually loses reserve currency status because they no longer want to trade and use dollars for settlement. And this, the, the amount of dollars that have been used in settlement, that's been, you know, it has been declining, but it's going to go off a cliff. Uh, and especially if they announce a 20 to 40 percent backing of their new currency, they're calling it the unit. That currency with 20 to 40 percent gold backing, you'll see pure fiat currencies collapse and you'll see the price of gold 
explode. If we truly had 8,300 tons, I mean, you look look to the east. I mean, China, China's probably got 35,000 metric tons. I mean, I can show you easily, uh, you know, 25,000 tons. There's no question in my mind that they have that amount. But the U.S. does not have that metal that they can revalue and, if you want to call it, refurbish their balance sheet. Um, they don't have the gold. They don't have, the, you know, there's no big stockpile of silver. Bill Holter was saying that at this point, it's all about kicking the can down the road. They're just pretending and extending. He mentioned an event from about a week and a half ago when Japan's market collapsed, losing 25% in just three days. Holter sees that as a warning shot for a global margin call that's likely coming, probably between now and the election. Holter also talked about the carry trade, which we were told was $20 trillion basically what's on the books. But then you have to consider the OTC over-the-counter markets. He questioned whether the real number could be double, triple, or even 10 times that amount. Is the carry trade really $200 trillion instead of $20 trillion? Who knows? But according to Holter, the claim that 75% of the carry trade was unwound in three days is complete nonsense. There's no way $20 trillion was cleaned up in three days after it took over 30 years to build up, and nobody got hurt.